Hi. <laughs> yeah, what's up? The, um, I was looking through the, uh, the final, I guess the next project, number four. Mm -hmm. And you, I, I think on the thing it says that you do not want uh, pictures that are not authorized. I'm like, what? I got to change everything? They have to be optimized. Well, optimized are fine, but I'm talking about the, um, it said, it said on, the, on the thing, it says, if you have pictures that are not authorized to be used, you're going to get a zero or something like that. And it's like, what? Well, yeah, you're not, not supposed zero, to steal but... pictures. <laughs> you have to have that? the intellectual <laughs> rights to your media. So if you didn't take the picture and you don't have permission to use it, you shouldn't be using it. Well, I, I, I just grabbed pictures. I, I, so I'm going to have to redo yeah, this again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you have to have legitimate pictures. You can't just steal so people's pictures. No, 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 no. <laughs> so now, no, okay. is it okay with you then if I put just pictures of people? Because I'm having a, the website was made to be pictures of T-shirts. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, you can you can find a picture of a T-shirt pretty easily. Okay, you, I, 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 just, I just think maybe I'm gonna because I don't know if you saw mine. I already had almost everything other than just fixing the pictures on the other way, on the other Yeah, page. yeah. So <laughs> the the objective of the Milestone Project is to mimic a real world website. And on a real world website, you would have permission to use the photos, and you would have legitimate okay, yeah. photos. <laughs> and obviously, yeah. if your if your client or whoever you're building the website for aren't providing you with the right media or content, then the burden of that kind of falls on you. Um, and I've shown you some royalty-free picture places you can go to get pictures. Remember, oh, Pexels? Yes. Yeah, so you can go and you can use those kinds of pictures that are royalty-free that you don't have to have permission to use. Use stock photography. But you can't just go and, and steal willy-nilly pictures from people. It's no, That's no bueno. Well, no, no, there was no people, but I was just, <laughs> I was just taking pictures. I took a picture of teachers. Now, the military should be okay. The military locals, because that's, that's standard. Everybody uses those. Yeah. But, but it, it's the actual T-shirts. Those are just pictures from... You know, the website that have picture, I just grab it. Oh, this looks good now. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, my no, gosh. You, you need to get some legitimate stock photography or get permissions to use those pictures. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm here. I'm here. So cool. I'm hey, hey. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just going to start writing down who I see so I can do attendance here on my phone. Hi, Seth. Hi. Let's see. Who else we have? Oh, hi, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> it's nice to see some of your bright, smiling faces. Amanda's here. Aiden's here. Hello. Do you guys like the ceiling Hi. in my office? You can see this lovely, like, rainbow sunshine ceiling. <laughs> this used to be. <laughs> right? Very Sistine Chapel. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> my mother-in-law used to do a preschool out of this room and so she painted the ceiling all cute and there used to be letters everywhere and I'm slowly turning it into my office. <laughs> all right, let's see. A couple more people are jumping on. Chris, hello. Okay, so I'm going to give the people like mm, five-ish minutes to jump on here. So if you are here and you have questions, fire at will. We can chat it out for a minute or two. I am recording my screen and I plan to post this on my YouTube channel so that the slackers that don't join us for the hangout might get some of the goodies with uh, information for the class. So, My only question is when is the semester over? Right? So done. <laughs> I'm feeling that way too. I am... Um, I think we're done May 1st, right? Is that when it's all over? That would be fun. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yep, the 28th is the final exam. So for this, the sake and purpose of this class, the 28th is it. And then we're done. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's been a weird semester. All right, let's see. I have a couple of chats coming through. Let's see. Oh, everyone's doing good. All right, cool. Um, all right. Any other questions while we're waiting around for people to join in? Um, um so I noticed some, I think milestone six, uh -huh. um, on the description for it, it said something about like needing 300 words per page. Right. On Is average. Right? Yeah. So 
Um, basically, we're just trying to set some sort of a standard or an expectation that there needs to be content on your website. You can't just make pages and put a couple pictures on it and call it good. There needs to be some sort of content. So on average, your pages should have about 300 words. I'm not going to sit there and read how many words are on each of your pages, but they do need to have some sort of a description so they're ranked in the search engine, which is part of the lecture today that we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, just, just make it so it has some content on each of your pages. Okay. And then for this next milestone, I guess, are you going to kind of talk about that later? Or? Yes, I am going to be talking about the milestone. Yes. Um, okay. And if I don't answer your questions, we can get to that too. So I'll make sure that I ask you if I've covered everything. <laughs> yeah. All right, looks like a couple of people are having a hard time logging on. I'm just messaging a couple of people on my phone. Hopefully they'll be able to get to it. All right. So I'm just trying to make sure I have everyone here written down. So I have Marco, Seth, Sarah, Amanda, Aiden, Chris so far. Am I missing anyone? Do we get extra credit for being here? Uh, you don't get extra credit, but I am doing uh, attendance, so there's 5% of your grade that's allotted for attendance, and so you'll be getting those points. Yep. I figure you guys needed to be rewarded for making the effort somehow. Well, so. <laughs> what I'm shooting is that at the very end, when you have us do that final website, it's going to be, we're not, I'm not, we're going to be missing a 40s and the 30s, unless, uh, unless well, you're Amanda. That one. That one's a hard one. I do have a rubric for that one, so I'll just stick now, to that. Now, is that going to be another test like the one we had no. on the midterm? No, because it's in there, though. You know, There's no test. There is a final, and it is a practical final. So you'll follow a set of instructions on how to build a website. We'll provide you with images and content, and then you have to piece it together. Okay. Yep. I would well, that say... kind of be like instructions like for creating the Dixie website or just kind of have a picture of what we need to do and then we all do it just randomly? Like both. Have the instructions? Yes, it will have both. It will have a picture of what it should look like at the end. Um, so okay. you'll have like a, a wireframe mock-up type picture. You'll have instructions. You'll have pictures. You'll have like um, the HTML and the CSS like starter uh, documents for you. So we try to like give you as many resources as you can to to start that. So, yeah. All right, looks like a couple more people just jumped on. Let me see who's here. Who's this? I'm shiny. Oh, no, that was lame. Oh, there we go. My computer just froze, I guess. All right, Spencer's here. All right, I think we're going to get started. Um, Hopefully some other people jump on at some point. <laughs> if not, that's fine. I am recording this one, so I'll post this to the YouTube when we're done and give people an opportunity to catch up on what they need to know going forward. Okay, so um, a couple of things. One is I'm sharing my screen now. Share screen. Ta-da. And... Um, a couple of things that I sent in an announcement, if you didn't see it, I wanted to highlight just real quick. Um, our final presentation signups are available. Um, if you follow the link that I sent in the announcement, it's going to take you to a page on my website that I made for this class. Um, and I just put this together with some extra resources, um, has you know slides, my YouTube channel link, uh, Google Hangout link, so if you ever um, misplace that or whatever, it will be there. Um, and then I have a little area here for um, the presentation. You can either click on Thursday, April 16th, which is really popular as you can imagine, um, or Tuesday, April 21st, which is almost, almost full. And when you click on those, they'll show you what time slots are still available. Okay, so you can click on one of those time slots and then it will have you put like your name, your email, and um, if you have any notes or whatever. I think you just need to provide a name and an email. So most of you have already done that. Um, if you haven't and you want to select a day and a time for your uh, final presentation, that's how you do it. All right, these final presentations are going to be 10 minutes. We're going to do a Google Hangout style. So we'll be here in the Google Hangout call 
And what happens is as we switch over to the Google Hangout, I'll click your picture. Like if I click on Marco here, it makes him the center of attention and then he'd be able to present and then we'd move on down through the class. And how would we, how would I put my website down? I'm just curious. I don't know. Yeah, so what you would do, you can see my screen. Um, there's three dots up here in the upper right hand corner. When you click on that, even for you guys, you should see the same options that are here on my screen and you can screen share. So when I click on you and make you the focal point of the Google Hangout, you'll click on those three little dots. You'll do screen share, so make sure you're on the computer that has your um, website on it in your browser. And then when you share your screen, you'll be able to do what I'm doing and click over to a different tab and we'll all be able to see it. Now, I'm watching you on, on my iPad my my computer where I work at is so it's uh, different than that one. Uh -huh. uh, I have to log in into your into my regular big uh, desktop. Yeah, you'll just choose which which one you want to drive with, and then that's the one that we'll use to do your presentation on. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, it'll, it'll be loaded. It'll be loaded on the other program. Yeah. The, uh, oh, this stuff, right? You pull it from there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Any other questions on, on how we're going to be doing a final presentation? All right, it looks like I have a chat from Kathleen. Oh, she's here, yay! Okay, hopefully that's working for everyone. Okay, cool. All right, so I don't see her in the video area though. I wonder if we, well, okay, we'll press forward. Um, all right, so that is the final presentation sign up, the first little thing. Um, I do also have a course. Oh, there's my Dean. Okay. There we go. All right, so as I was saying, on the Valent page, I do have a course feedback uh, form. This is anonymous. I don't collect any information with this, and I'm not recording IP addresses, so you don't have to worry about that when you submit those. Um, this is just for me only. The college also sends out like a course uh, survey, and I highly recommend that you participate with the college's course survey because they use that for the department. But this is just for my own selfish reasons. Um, basically because I just want to feel validated as an instructor and see what I can do to improve. So if you have the time and you want to share some feedback about the course, I'd love to hear from you here. Be as harsh or as honest or as nice as you would like to be. Um, I welcome it all. So there's that as well. Um, like I said, completely anonymous. So when you click send, it just sends it to an uh, email that I have set up and I can read through your feedback. Okay. So sign up presentation, course feedback, that's what's on this page. All right. Oh, shoot. Um, okay, so there's that. I also wanted to look at the calendar with you. I think that was the next thing I talk about in my uh, announcement here. The milestone discussion for milestone four is due um, before midnight on April 8th. Um, that's 50% of your grade, so make sure you're participating in that. Um, and then let's look at the calendar for the rest of the stuff. I did move things around a little bit. Um, so yeah, your milestone was due on Saturday, but we're going until April 8th for the discussion. I realize, oops, sorry, I clicked. Um, that's kind of unconventional. You usually have like a whole week to participate in the discussion, but we're moving through things so quickly that um, I want to make sure that I have enough time to get to everything. So that discussion window is kind of going to be shorter with this milestone four. Um, just so that we all have time to actually like look at the discussion comments and then make any changes we want to before the next milestone is due, which is milestone five on Saturday. Um, so yes, milestone fourth or milestone four was last Saturday. Milestone five is this Saturday. And that's just, you know, putting all the finishing touches on your content and actually moving towards publishing your website. Um, I did also make a note on the announcement here. In my class, um, 
finding a domain registrar and hosting your website will not be required. Um, for the rest of the department, whenever anyone takes this class, they are required to find a domain registrar and actually host their website, pay for hosting, pay for the domain, and get it all published. I won't be requiring that from my class. Um, you can keep it on Alter Vista, that's totally fine, but that um, experience is really valuable and highly recommended. So um, if you don't end up registering your domain and hosting your website, do look into how you would do that um, because it's, it's like I said, it's usually a requirement and it's very valuable to know at least how to interact with a domain registrar. Okay, um, so we're covering module 13 and 14 today. Um, just so that we can kind of, like I said, get ahead. Um, the calendar still shows you that the quiz um, for the intro to JavaScript isn't due until, yes, 14th. So I don't think we have a quiz on web promotion. So the only thing that's due, or no, we do have a quiz on web, pro web promotion, but not one on module 14. Wait, am I lying again? No, that's right. Yes, okay. So this is the quiz for it. I'm all sorts of confused right now. Okay, so yeah, you only have one quiz due today, even though we're covering two modules. How about that? <laughs> okay, um, and then we do have a short assignment due on Thursday. I'll be back here on Hangouts to help you guys if you need help with that assignment. Um, pretty straightforward. We're just writing a description for each page. Um, and no, it's not a trick. It really is that easy. Um, so I'll be here if you need help with that, and we can talk more about the assignment on Thursday. Um, and today we'll just focus on module 13 and module 14. Okay, any questions so far? That's weird. Is it asking anyone else for an access code? No. That's weird. Okay. Oh, Sarah, thank you for helping her out. You're sweet. No worries. <laughs> All right. I'm so distracted trying to talk and look at chats at the same time. Obviously not multitask oriented right now. Okay. Um, the last thing from the assignment is just talking about the final exam. Um, the final exam is um, going to be April 28th at 4 p.m. Uh, you will have access to it through Canvas. I will send an announcement that day with an access code for the final exam. Um, and it's two hours, so you need to make sure you begin the final exam before or right at 4 p.m. because um, it closes at 6 p.m. And that's all so that I can get in there right at 6 p.m. and start grading those bad boys and putting your uh, final grade into banner before midnight. I like to do that just so that I can be done and you can be done and we can all just press forward. <laughs> um, it's kind of a hard final. I, I'm not going to lie or sugarcoat it. Um, and so I try to hold up my end by, you know, putting your grade back to you as soon as possible. Um, and obviously, if you have any questions on that or if anything else is concerning you, let me know and we can kind of work through that. But that's how we'll do the final exam. Okay. All right. Well, let's check on Kathleen. Oh, that is weird. All right. If anybody else has any um, questions, concerns, we're doing all right. Okay. I will move on to the lecture then. So web promotion is one of my absolute favorite chapters of the book. Um, it's one that I have the most experience in with my career as well. Um, it talks about actually you know, publishing your website and what we do after we've created all the content and done all of the technical stuff. It's all the fun stuff that comes after that. So, all right. Um, popular search engines. So um, for those of you that don't know the third one down, <laughs> that is the Chinese national um, search engine um, that they are required to use. So that's why Beidou is on the list. Um, Google has more market share nowadays. And if we click this link, I think they even update it to show. Let's see. Yeah, 2020. So we are looking at Google with 72%. Oh, okay. So we're still in the 70s. Bing, 11.8%. Beidou is 10. 
uh, Yahoo and all the rest are you know two percent and under um, so most of the time we follow Google standard for web publishing but that's you know more or less just the standard in general um, I just think Bing's so cute for trying to keep up you know just gotta gotta applaud the underdog sometimes even though their system is flawed. Um, okay, so why do we need to know about search engines? Mostly so that people can find us, right? Um, since Google kind of rules the world when it comes to search engines, there's a lot of tools that they put out that we can use with websites. One of the tools that I highly recommend are um, Webmaster Tools, or I think that it's called um, Google for Business now. Um, but essentially they have like a whole toolbox of um, different um, key features and things like that you can add to your website, help you rank um, in the search engine. And then they also have Google Analytics um, that can give you some information about the traffic on your website. Um, and that's also very valuable to kind of um, quantify your traffic and see what you can do to improve content and different things like that. I'm just gonna check on the dings over here. Oh, good job. Sarah, kudos for being tech support. Okay. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, just yell at me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, pushing forward. This is just so weird not seeing your faces. Usually I can see like your eyes rolling in the back of your head, people falling asleep, and then I know if I need to be more animated or something. Um, so I'm just going off of a screen right now and talking to myself, and it's very, very foreign. Um, <laughs> okay, search engine components. Um, different things to watch for when we're using search engines. Obviously, in our code, we've been telling it to no index, no follow um, with a little robot tag in the head section. And this is basically just so that when we're pushing out all of this tester content for this class, um, the robots can kind of skid over the top of that and not index it, right? Because we're just creating... Um, little test pages in, in this class but when you actually push your milestone project if you're working with a real life business or it's a real life website that you're going to be publishing make sure that you remove that tag out of the head section the index no index no follow tag um, so that you can be indexed and followed on the interwebs that would be a good idea um, so the search form is basically just going out to Google and hitting go. So this little form right here, this little box, has a lot more functionality to it than meets the eye. Obviously there's, you know, the voice activated search now. You can share different things. Um, you know, they play around with some fun features on the Google homepage sometimes. But when we click uh, uh, into a Google search, um, the whole database is activated and then they pull things not only based on like what you're looking for, the keywords, but also on relevancy. Um, I think I've talked to you guys a little bit about the updates that were done a few years ago with Penguin and Panda. And essentially those made it so that we can't just keyword overload our websites anymore and have them come up in a search. We need to actually make sure we're pushing out relevant content that has backlinks, credible sources, um, images that have meta information, videos that have meta information. If you have videos that are hosted on YouTube and linked into or embedded on your website, that also helps. There's lots of different things that you can do so that Google is happier with your website and they rank you higher than your competitors. Um, so those are just a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, so search engine robots are also called spiders or bots. Um, basically, it's a computer algorithm that is programmed to go and find all content on the web. Um, once it finds that content, it tries to index it based on titles, meta tags, text in the headings, hyperlinks, subtext, all of those different things. So that's the major uh, force that we try to work with when we're pushing content out online. Any questions so far? Are we doing okay? I'll try not to be too long-winded here. We'll glaze over the top of some of this. Obviously, we don't know what a database is. We've been working with them this, this semester. Um, but some of them uh, that uh, manage these databases um, use different um, kind of management software. Um, Oracle, MySQL, um, those different things are all used to manage those systems. Um, and yeah, a search engine database contains information about the web pages. Good job, book.
<laughs> Nailed it. Okay, search engine form. We know what the search engine form is. We're familiar with that. Um, when the form is submitted, obviously it goes out and tries to look for the information that would be most relevant. Um, a SERP is a search engine results page. Now there are so many things that we can dive into here. Um, and depending on how um, detail oriented you are with your website content, there are ways that you can customize how your website turns up on the SERP. Um, you can actually tell it and provide it with different information so that it will not only provide your, you know, you know the page title and a brief snippet, but it will also have like sub menu information, um, other relevant links or contact information, and those snippets, as they're called, can be customized. Um, also, if you wanted to do a paid advertisement with like Google AdWords, um, you could come up closer to the top, but you have to pay for it. And a lot of the times, it's a pretty expensive spot to pay for it. Okay. Uh, the search engine has their own policy for ordering the search results, obviously that algorithm that we're always fighting with and trying to understand. Um, but most important thing to note here is that you have relevant, up-to-date content that is, um, you know, just basically to the point. You don't want a lot of fluffy stuff on your website um, and make sure that whatever content you do produce is credible. Um, we can talk about keywords a little bit. Um, basically, when you create a website, you're going to think of a few short um, keywords or phrases that people might use to find you. Um, you know, if you're a glass company and you make windows, you might want to you might want to mention something about windows or home repair or um, you know different things that have to do with windows. Um, and that would help with the keywording strategy. There's um, a few ways you can work this. Uh, when I was doing a lot of marketing for companies and writing blog content pieces for them, I had a list of my first level keywords, or which were obvious words, like the name of the company, the name of the industry we were in, and a couple of key phrases or key problems that people had when they were looking for that company. And those were like my first level keywords that I would use, and I would always use at least one or two of them and each a bit of content I'd push out. Um, my second level of keywords were more like into different funnels where I looked at like people that were actually coming to the business and spending money with the business and I tried to categorize each type of person that interacted with the business. And so those secondary keywords were aggregated from those ca categories. And I created a strategy around those. Now you don't have to be that like crazy, or I'm OCD and, and I get a little a little into the details. But that really helped me as I was producing content to not waste my time. Right? I wanted to make sure I was producing content that was worthwhile, that was relevant, and that would help the business without just making fluffy stuff. Right? So um, that was kind of a strategy around that. Um, just like we mentioned with our milestone projects, you do want to make sure you have at least 300 words on average per page just so that you have enough content for the bots to index that page. Now obviously some pages aren't going to have tons of content. Like when you're checking out of a website, the checkout page doesn't have a paragraph telling you how to check out. That doesn't make sense. So you want to have content where it makes sense. Um, and so you don't have to worry, you know, on some like, like the contact us page, you know, you can't really write five paragraphs about how to contact you if you have a contact form. Um, so just where applicable, make sure you're explaining things. All right. So we know about this meta element, but let's tick, uh, check into it one more time. So in HTML, we do have a meta tag that we can use. It can be opened and it can be closed in some scenarios. Um, or actually, no, it's a standalone. Um, crazy, um, placed in the head section and the attributes are name and content. So when we're looking at like our Dixie assignment, you'll see some meta tags in the top of our head section. So before we start the body content, right, the information that we can't see on the page, that's where this meta information will come into play. I have a random question. Do it. I'm ready. <laughs> so uh, like everybody else in the world, I watched Tiger King yes. last week. And <laughs> One of the things that he did was create a company that was like super similar to her so that they would come up in the search results. Is that something that they just kind of took advantage of? Yeah, yeah, that's totally a thing. And people do it all the time and it's super annoying. Yeah, so um, one thing that I will say on that subject matter, 
there's going to be times where you have competitors that get in your space that are, I don't know, they kind of get to a point where they, they're like harassing you <laughs> and they're, you know, trying to keep up with you. But the thing about that is um, if you create a legitimate site and you have legitimate content, it's going to be really difficult for them to steal all of that. Um, and then when it comes to copyright too, there are legal rights. Um, there was, I think I shared it with you, even an article that I came across when I was doing some work for my master's. And there, there's a lot of legal proceedings where people open up um, counterfeit e-commerce websites. You'll see like a lot of them, not to be too like region specific, but a lot of Chinese um, e-commerce websites will copy legitimate branded content and then they'll make knockoff products and sell it under an e-commerce site that's really, really similar to a, a name brand site. Um, and a lot of them just get away with it because if they get any legal action or any legal recourse from it, they just close that domain and open a new one. And so it's really hard to, to you know, enforce that right to your content. Um, so you just try to make your website as, um, you know, relevant as possible. Make sure you have a good social media following. Make sure people know that you're the real deal. Um, and just try to build your brand the best that you can. I did have one um, company that I worked for, and I think I, I don't know, I don't remember if I told you this story, so sorry if I'm repeating myself, but we had a domain um, that we couldn't get control of because someone had already taken it. They beat us to it. <laughs> and they held that domain basically for ransom. And the owners of the company didn't ever get full ownership of the domain, but they did work out a contract with the guy that owned it so that they would give him royalties each year if they would, if he would point that domain to our website. Even though it was the name of our company, we had the intellectual rights to the name, we had everything trademarked and registered and all the legal stuff was in order, but because things get kind of dicey, it's really hard to enforce and it's really hard to enforce a ghost too and international um, stuff kind of comes into play too. The guy that had this domain that we were working with was in the UK and so we couldn't use like, you know, regular laws in the United States against him because he didn't have to adhere to it. So um, there are inter international business laws concerning like um, the web and different intellectual property online. But I, like I said, it's really hard to enforce. So you just have to do your best to make sure that you have enough credible information and make yourself look as good as you can. So Thanks. long, long answer to your question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Cool. I need to watch this Tiger King thing. I, um, I've been hearing a lot about it. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet. I am slow to that, conform. That's why I watched it is because everybody's talking about Let's it. See. So it, it's, it really is funny. So just to kind of give you some background on that question, um, they had a website called Big Cat Rescue, uh -huh. and they rescue people or cats, tigers, and things like that that are owned privately in the U.S., um, cause someone will like buy a tiger cub and go, this will be a cool pet. And then suddenly they're 400 pounds and, and no <laughs> place for it to go. Um, and so on the opposite side, you have these people that run zoos and the rescue people are trying to take down the zoo people because they're the ones breeding these cubs and sending them out into the world. Mm -hmm. And so you have them butting heads and what the zoo people did was created a company called big cat rescue. And then it was like entertainment. And went and built this website to basically mirror the other people so that when they wow. Googled it, it would come up in the search results. So kind of interesting. Yeah, that's that's not fun. And I've definitely, <laughs> I've played that game a few times with a few companies I've worked with. And it's not that's fun. Crazy. It's super hard to win because um, people, people believe what they see on the internet, you know, they don't fact yeah. check. And so if you put on Facebook that something's true, by gum, it better be true or else you're going to have a following the next day. Anyways. Okay, cool. Well, yes, Tiger King. It's on my list for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So this is just another example of the uh, meta description. Hopefully you will have a really good understanding of this, um, 
after staring at it for a solid five minutes while I chat and chat. Um, but this is what your assignment is on this week. So I, it was a good screen to freeze on. Um, basically, this is all you'll be doing for your assignment. You'll be going to the head section of each HTML document for your Dixie assignment, and you're adding in a meta name and content. Um, so that description needs to be a sentence. So when I'm grading your assignments, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to validate it, make sure it validates. And then I'm going to check the head section for a description. And then if you have those things, you get 100%. So that's the assignment this week. All right. So search engine optimization or SEO, um, another acronym under the millions that you've learned this semester. Um, basically determining keywords that are most relevant for your website incorporating those into page titles, heading tags, text, and different things like that so that the content on your site is relevant to those keywords and they match. Um, linking, so I will say one thing on this. When you're linking out to other resources, you also want other resources to link back to you. They call those backlinks. Um, sometimes a white hat SEO gimmick would be to pay for backlinks, and they would actually pay for these random um, websites that just house databases of information to have backlinks to their stuff and they were just like fake websites basically and so you want to have relevant backlinks um, some of those are really easy like on your sir on your social media pages having a link to your website that's a relevant backlink um, if you have like friendly businesses that you refer business to and they can refer business to you um, those are great you know, people to contact and say, hey, I have a website. Do you want to put my link on your site and I'll put yours on mine? Or I'll do a blog post about your services if you do a blog post about mine. Um, a lot of that friendly um, linking back and forth is really helpful for search engine optimization. Obviously, making sure you have um, images and multimedia configured with alt text is also another great um, best practice for SEO. Um, having valid code is always helpful and having content of value. Um, you really want this to be the highest priority, in, in my opinion, because if you have content that's valuable enough for your um, customers, your industry, your people, they'll share that content. And that's the best way for people to find you and spend big money, is if people talk about you in a positive way and they refer um, your business or your service on social media or word of mouth, um, the people that come back to you and spend money with you will spend more because they feel like they already trust you through that person that recommended them. So content and value is really high priority. All right, so um, you know a lot of these things are kind of just rehashing what we've talked about. Um, we could talk about pay-per-click campaigns, cost per click, all of that jazz. I'll let you look at that as you are interested in it. Um, this is kind of a rabbit hole that you can jump down um, and it's one reason why I don't do AdWords <clears throat> it gets really involved and you can end up spending quite a bit of money. And so um, it's not something that I enjoy personally as a marketer because I don't like to spend money unless I know I'm going to get a return on my investment, especially when it's my client's money, because then they're going to hate me if I just throw money at something and then it's gone and I have nothing to show for it. So there are ways that you can track it through AdWords and, and calculate your ROI, but it gets really convoluted and all of these CPM and CTR and CPC things are hard to keep track of. So um, if that's something that interests you, there is the Google AdWords link in these slides. I'd recommend you check that out for more information on it. Um, is anyone like particularly interested in ads? Good. <laughs> okay, mapping your site. There is one more step in the process of publishing your website that I do want to make sure we at least touch on here, and that is an XML site map. So usually when you kick out your website and you're done with it and you're publishing it and you're ready to go, you'll submit your XML site map to the Webmaster Tools handle on Google, and what that does is it just pushes you up in the priority line of pages to index. So when that robot is going through things, they hit that list first, and then they go on to try to find any other content they may have missed. Um, that's one, one way to kind of get a jump on getting your site indexed and getting some more information out there and making sure the information that is out there is correct. Um, 
Another thing I will add to this is the Google My Business feature or new profile thing. Google's always changing what it's called. You know, they had the Google Plus for a minute and now they don't. And then they had Google My Business and Webmaster Tools. Um, but the main point here is to make sure you understand how to publish your website with Google. And these links will help kind of get you set in the right direction if you've never um, looked into that before. I highly recommend that you kind of familiarize yourself with that process. All right, um, and that's gonna do it for that part. So um, web analytics, we can talk about that a little bit more if you guys want. Does anybody, is anyone interested in learning more about web analytics at this juncture? Silence, okay, that's fun. Um, so basically, let's just go over then click through this a little bit, link popularity, social media optimization. Like I said, I blabber so much, I usually cover all of these in the other slides. Um, oh, a QR code, that was kind of a hot thing for a second, and then it wasn't again, but they're still around. It was that little square thing that you scan with your phone. You used to have, a, have to have a special app to scan it, but now any camera phone will um, just scan it with the camera. Um, banner ads, different things like that. We talked about reciprocal linking. Um, and different things. There's the QR code. But yeah, so iframe elements. Um, this is one thing that YouTube uses, an example. You can also use the embed code on YouTube. Highly recommend that you use YouTube videos in your websites. That always um, does wonders with search engine optimization. All right, so there's that. Um, I forgot to jump over and get the slides for the next module loaded, so bear with me. Oh no, get out of there. Didn't want to do grades. I meant to click on. See, whenever I click, it like shifts. It's weird. Um, all right, we'll just go down here. Quiz for JavaScript. And there's the slides. All right. And that's why I have a Mac. My husband has a PC that he's been working from home on, and every time he tries to do anything, it takes it like 10 years, and I just laugh. That's yeah. funny. Uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, all right, so this is going to be a brief look, as it says, into JavaScript and jQuery. So hang with me. A lot of this gets like crazy confusing, but we just need to glaze the top of it and make sure you have like just a small understanding of what it is. All right, so we're not gonna be diving in and actually doing anything with this scripting. We're just making sure we understand that it's there and that's what the heavy lifters do. And if you want to be a heavy lifter, great for you. There's tons of classes in the CIT department that will totally cover it and make you all knowledgeable on the subject. Um, but you're gonna get my understanding here, which is a brief overview. Okay, so JavaScript is an object-based scripting language. It works with objects associated with web. Okay, so usually when you're creating something using JavaScript, you'll be creating it for a window, a document, or another element like a form, image, or a hyperlink. Okay, um, it's originally developed by Netscape. We've learned about them before, right? Especially when it comes to web stuffs. Um, Nets, uh, Netscape and Sun Microsystems collaborated and they made JavaScript. So JavaScript is not Java, right? So we want to make sure that we understand that there's no affiliation there. They just have the same name because they like to confuse the crap out of us. It's one of those fun things. Um, so yeah, JavaScript is not Java. Uh, common uses of JavaScript are to display a message, um, select a list in navigation, edit or validate information on a form. Um, you'll remember our uh, little form that we did on the alumni page. That was some JavaScripting uh, logic that we used. And if you wanted to dive into that deeper, you could do more JavaScript to validate forms. Um, image rollovers, display current date, calculations, all of those things can be accomplished with JavaScript. Okay. Um, coding JavaScript often uses script tags, or always uses script tags, I don't know why I said often. Um, but anyways, that's how you'll be implementing that into your um, HTML, right? That's where JavaScript will live, not in CSS, but your HTML pages, if you use it. All right, one of the things that you'll notice with the uh, script element is it has a container tag, and that might be placed either in the head or the body section of a web page. 
and here's an example of what it would look like. All right. And that's JavaScript. That's all we're going to talk about in regards to JavaScript right now. Um, I think the book does jump back and forth a little bit, but the next thing that they cover in the lecture is the document object model or DOM, um, which is basically just a hierarchy of how these different things are structured. So when you open a window to view the interwebs in your browser, that's like the top level of the DOM model. Um, the next layer is going to be what information you're pulling um, from what. So if you have a document that you're wanting to view, there's going to be different elements inside of that document, like an anchor, a form, an image, a link. And then there might even be another layer of information to each of those things. The form will have different elements. The image might have a source. And that's kind of the layers to the content that you're viewing when you go online and view something on a website. Okay, um, an object is a thing or an entity. I'm sure you had no idea what object meant, but now you do. Um, usually in a browser window, it can be a submit button or a web page document as well. A uh, property is a characteristic or an attribute of the object. Okay, so the background color of a web page document is a property of that object. All right. Um, the method that we go and access that information, so the action or the verb part, um, is this example here. So if we were to write that in the scripting language, that's how we would call to those things. And other JavaScript elements um, are events. So when you on click, so when you click something, or when you have a mouse over event, or a mouse out event, those are all different events that can trigger then a method on a property for an object. All right, to work backwards through that. Um, so these are some of the events that you can use. Um, a lot of them are similar to what we've used with some other stuff with CSS and different things like that, right? Especially with your navigation. Um, JavaScript and events, so um, they can be configured to a platform with different actions. And this is an example of how this alert box would um, be triggered on the home anchor tag. So that event would make click to go home appear. All right. Um, debugging. So when we are debugging HTML and CSS, it's already pretty much a pain. But um, same rules kind of apply for JavaScript if you get into that and start working with it. Um, we'll pay a close attention to your syntax and um, different uh, details as you're inputting that into the code. Like I said, brief overview, guys. We're just glazing over the top of it. Um, all right. So Firefox browser, don't know how many of you still use that one, but um, there is a web console thing. Okay, cool. There's that. Um, trying to see if there's anything else that we really need to make sure we touch on. Um, okay, I guess a little bit with object-oriented programming. We need to make sure that we understand variables and the use of variables as we're using those. Um, so um, this is one of the examples that they're um, giving us here. Prompts with the different messages, so like a pop-up or a box or one of the annoying things that kind of signal that something else could happen. Um, some operators, comparison operators, decision making. So we're kind of uh, working in some logic here with the programming, right? Um, functions, using the function. So how you would put that together in a, in a way that would reflect um, good syntax. Form validation, we've kind of talked about that a little bit. Just trying to see if there's anything else here that I want to make sure that we cover I think all of that is pretty much self-explanatory. JavaScript's complicated and it's for programmers. Mainly when I've used JavaScript, I'm copying stuff from like a widget or a module of third party and pasting it into my HTML. So basically, <laughs> if you're going to be a web designer and not necessarily a programmer, you'll want to know how to hack it and not break it and when you're using it. And that's basically what I will say in regards to JavaScript. Are there any other questions? All right, I kind of have a tongue in cheek approach to this stuff because it just blows my mind, honestly. I don't, I don't like working with it. Okay, 
What is jQuery? jQuery is a free open source JavaScript library. So basically it gives us all the resources to use JavaScript and manipulate some of its functions and features. Um, common uses of jQuery are to manipulate CSS properties, um, detect and react to events like mouse movements, animate elements on a web page, and much more. Our book cops out, so I'm going to cop out along with them. Um, adding jQuery to a web page, you would download that database um, thing, and then you would have a script that would load it into your page. And that's how you would use jQuery with JavaScript. Um, all right, a ready event, in case you wanted to see how that looks. Um, very complicated. <laughs> and then here's like a pop-up script, and that's how that would work. Um, here's some other jQuery selectors. If you want to look at the whole um, list of them, the API for jQuery is here. And some methods and stuff. Any other questions on jQuery or JavaScript? If you wanted to use an image gallery, there are lots of really cool jQuery image galleries. Um, like I said, these are mainly things you'll want to know how to hack, <laughs> manipulate without breaking, um, unless you want to be a cool programmer. And then I say go to a different class because I don't know much about it. Okay, that's it. Any other questions? Will we go to prison? What? To learn, teaching us how to hack? Well, <laughs> hack just means you're making it customized to your website. There's no, there's no rule against it. I know. I got to do it this week. What was that? <laughs> I said I got to do that at work this week. There, there's a department that they have this web page set up to click something from a drop down menu and it will fill a template into a box. Uh huh. And then there's a form that they put in like the customer's name and whatever link that they were looking for. And then they click a button that's powered by JavaScript that says like insert details. Nice. And so the form that they will put in goes into that template and we needed the opposite. I needed to have a drop down menu where I could insert a template and then I needed a copy of a clipboard button. Um, Sorry, there's a fire truck going by my house. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I, I figured out how to hack their code and put in a copy to clipboard button instead of an add details button. Nice! See? That's a perfect example of your interactions with JavaScript in the future. <laughs> you need to know enough to be dangerous, but not break it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Great. Where do you work, Sarah? I work for Apple Care. Oh, nice! That's awesome. Yeah, I'm a corporate Apple employee, but um, I'm in their Apple Care like organization. So that's sweet, cool. Well, I'm sure that's a pretty awesome job. Okay, it's it's yeah, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> all right. If there's any other questions, I'm here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and. Um, hang out for a second and I'm going to stop my little recording and I'll be here in the chat or we can video chat, whatever you want to do. I'll be here. Question. I always have a question. Oh, good. I'm here to answer them. So fire. Well, um, I see that you send me a thing that, um, that I did not about changing the, uh, the, um, I guess my, when you asked me to share my, my I was having trouble with my, with my page and you said share it with me so i had to put it up so you can see it mm -hmm. you said okay and then, you, then you told me you you're having this issue and then you said if you fix it uh i'll give you i'll give you your your, your grade mm -hmm. so I, I i said well what are you talking about i fixed it immediately so i looked up there right now and i validated right right now when we're talking i started validating everything's there it says, it says no no errors what I was doing wrong when I when I got my my uh, parse errors mm -hmm. was that I was putting the form, I was placing the form in the uh, CSS because I was using a CSS and it's got two two buttons. One's to validate the CSS, the other one's the HTML. Mm -hmm. I clicked the HTML and was trying to validate it with a CSS, so it's giving me a parse error. Oh, okay. And then that's why I was I took that HTML off on the very first page fix it i did it immediately mm -hmm. and i'm like 
get you a, I, and that was that's all I heard. I was like, what? Okay. But okay. right now when I looked at it, it says fix it. So I'm like, well, I have to fix it. I don't know what, what, what you're talking about. All right. Yeah. Let's, like, let's look at that. Second and... thing that I need to ask you, no, that's already fixed, but then, okay, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. The second thing, you, said, you mentioned at the beginning about going and logging in about your times. Where? I, I've been looking at it and I can't find it. Say it one more time. On our, on our uh, discussions, you said, you mentioned us that you need to go to your, your site. You just send something out where we could put in our times when we were going to do a presentation. Oh, right. Yeah. So that would be just on that valent.com forward slash web 1400 page. I put that link in the announcement in Canvas. Well, I'm looking at Canvas, uh, what, the, uh, like an email announcement, right? It's an announcement, yeah. So on, or I'm going to share my screen again. What day? What day would you did you date this? Yeah, here, I'm going to share my screen so you can see it. So when you go over here to Canvas, um, second link down is announcements. Right. And then I have all of these different announcements. So the final presentation sign up and um, is the one from April third. And then the link is just right here in that first, or I guess second paragraph. Hold on a second. No, no. Okay, I guess I haven't opened that one. Why am I keep, always find up being lost in this? <laughs> I found this really cool widget that manages my calendar, and so I just dropped it into my website here. But yeah, you can click on Thursday or Tuesday, April 21st, and it will show oh, you what that. times are available. Is this the one? Let me pull this up. Um, is, was this the one you're talking about? I, God, I can't even make this. I hate Apple. Excuse me there. Uh, <laughs> Careful there. Audrey. I'm a big fan. <laughs> and they're employing Sarah, so we like them. Yeah, there you go, Sarah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, right, is this the one? Right yeah, here? exactly. Okay. And then I just want to make sure that I get that one before. And there is that's it, right? Yep. Uh huh. And so you'll choose, give it a minute. It's going to load. There we go. And so you can. There too. Okay. Yep. I, I can. I say that one. Okay. Now let's look at the other one. What you're talking about that I'm still messing up. Uh, I can't share my my screen. So how do I share my screen? I have it already on all this, doesn't it? No. If you want to share your screen, Marco, look at look at my screen right here. This little uh -huh. three uh, dots up here in the corner. You should be able to no, share I your screen. That. But I, I I'm using two computers. I'm using my iPad. And I'm using my my regular um, this one here, the one on the, okay. on the bottom. Of this. So yeah, you can use either I one. I can't share this one. I can. Okay. You can as long as you're logged in to your Dmail, and you click on the Hangout link with your Dmail. Hmm. Um, I, I, it, it's gonna take like forever. Go ahead and help somebody else. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm here. No, I'm <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen then. Jump back over here. I'm going to finish my recording. Bye.